IG. I just wanted to remind y'all to make sure you check. Hello, IG. It's your girl, Larkira. Just Larkira's conversational piece. Just a little snippet. I just want to invite any professionals um, in the field that could be CPS, it could be social worker, psychiatrist, psychologist, counselors, to join me in today's live at 3 p.m. Tune in just for your personal input. If you guys have ever been challenged with any mental health challenges, if you've been raped, if you've been molested, any addiction services, racial bias, suicide, depression. Hey, good afternoon, IG. It's your girl, Larkira. This is Larkira's Conversation with Peace. And today we're going to be talking about neglect as well as toxic relationships. If you guys care to join me at three, tune back in. Right now I'm just doing some essential cleaning, washing the dishes. I challenge you to invite all professionals who deal with behavioral health to join in. If you're challenged with any behavioral health, if you're a survivor, please join in. Constant events I'm preparing for. Little animal, I like the rent. Then I like to wash. I don't like all that food on my dishes. So first, I take all the food out. Then I rinse. Hey, gl glitter girls. people will be joining us today but today's topic is going to be neglect I apologize about the poor connection. No, it wasn't just the poor connection. It had paused on me. I'm kind of using my blender as a prop right now to hold my phone. Do you guys have any questions for me? I see my coaches on here watching me. You see me? I'm trying to snack. these dishes waiting for you guys to join me how are you today Ashley I know you're so busy so this time um, I also um, am looking for a brand manager as well as some other things like assistant, look for journalists. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. How are you? Uh, 
I'm good. <laughs> You're right, Ella. It's always good to hear. Trying to find some new creative ways to brought, uh, bring the attention. I was thinking about um, inviting people on. It's kind of hard now with everything that's going on with the pandemic. I know a lot of people that's already in the behavioral health field, but so many people are trying to get caught up with their own lives and trying to figure out a creative way um, to do that. And also the technology part of things, having people join in um, virtually. I think it would bring, um, you know, a crowd or even if I could have someone, maybe like a little um, snippet of someone singing that's talented. Yes, I can imagine. I know you're doing the most. Set a date. A day for the um, performance. Yeah, I was thinking about reaching out to a couple people. <laughs> Maybe asking someone if they could sing or recite um, spoken word or something other than myself. Just try to liven it up a little bit for my audience. I'm getting a lot of interaction in the groups, but outside of the groups on Facebook, I can't really seem to figure it out. Sounds like a great idea. There are plenty of people that would want to join on a conversation with you. I'm sure I just have to figure it out how to go about doing it. Like, if, um, if there's a couple of people I was talking to, and they were saying, hey, I'm in Chicago, or, you know, it's a time difference. I'm like, hey, well, you know, I'll just save the live so you can go back and view it. But um, that's the stepping stone. I guess I have to go over. I'm trying to figure out how can I possibly get these people to start joining in. That's okay. Consistency is the key. <laughs> That's cute. Yes, I know. You're totally right. I had five viewers yesterday outside of you. Well, that will make four, but five total. Any good um, pointers that you have for me? Maybe I should try something new. I know I wanted to try to do like, um, I don't know, I just like the presentation, like when you were saying the bullet bulletin point. I like that, um, basically things that I'm posting is kind of how I want um, things to be aligned for me. So I'm trying to figure it out. And I'll be playing with that tonight. Trying to learn how to do a new flyer with the bulletin points like that. And then um, as well as um, just doing more things that pop out when I'm doing my story. Because it looks so bland to me, I don't want it just looks amateur. So, um, I am trying to attempt to work on it. I was on the website that she gave me. It's a lot of good people on there, but I know I had to like read through everything and kind of like a fine tooth pick. And I said I wasn't going to pick anyone until I um, traversed with you anyway. Yes, with my name on it, you know, the logo, just, you know, things that pop. You know, when I was doing my research, they were saying, well, you already know this, of course, but um, they were just pretty much saying, you know, things that really matter and stick out is like things that already have your uh, brand on it and your logo. People remember things like that. They um, kind of, it draws people in, which I already know, but I still have to make an effort, you know, because um, I just, I'm just so passionate about what I believe in. And I feel like when I'm not doing um, too much, I'm not doing enough. Like I have to, in order to fulfill myself, in order to feel like I'm being challenged. So um, that's something else I'm trying to work on, get a little bit more done. Right. 
I'm sharing everyone's content and I thought that was like a good way of trying to get people, you know, to maybe, hey, oh, she's sharing my page. I haven't seen her, but they probably have so many people sharing their content at this point that it won't even matter. I don't, I'm trying to think outside the box. Then I tried to think on Eventbrite, but Eventbrite is like totally different to me. I don't know. Oh yes, um, I take care of myself every morning. I say self self affirmations. Um, I love listening to music. Um, that always keeps me grounded. And sometimes, just you know, taking myself a bath. I don't really do much outside um, lately because of everything that's going on. But I always make sure I take care of myself first. I wanted to talk to you um, outside of the live too about a piece that I was thinking about putting in book two, but it might be more impactful if I added it somewhere in, in book one, but I'm not exactly sure where. And that's another thing. Um, my friend, he had his own business adventures, so he didn't get to go on my live yesterday, nor um, did he finish editing the book. I'm sorry, that was Monday. Nor did he finish editing my book, so... Do you have a positive playlist? Yes, um, kind of not really like a playlist. It's just certain songs I keep um, burnt in the back of my memory that probably are burnt in my mind. Like, I love Whitney Houston's song, I Didn't Know My Own Strength. Carrie, um, and Luda, Champion. And I love the song by K. Michelle, A Mother's Prayer. Oh, I also love the song by Trinity, God's Grace. Um, I love James Forch um yes, James Fortune, um, Yolanda Adams. Some rap, but I'm more so, you know, R and B type thing. Gives me inspiration, just certain parts of certain songs. And then I'm the type of person, even though I can't sing, I make up my own song. My family knows that about me. Like I always, ever since I was younger, I might sing, hum um, a tune or something. Excuse me for being rude. Um, and I'll just make up my own song. A lot of my things that I used to write, I don't have anymore. But it's something that I'm getting back into. Just for fun. What do you do to take care of your wellness? drawing taking care of your wellness is that something you like to do art is very therapeutic i actually have one song from a youth um i believe i let you hear it um when you came to my um event um at the HIV summit, but yes, that is a great idea. Um, I actually tried that, and of course, a couple of them that I was working with wanted to uh, pretty much put profanity in it, and I wasn't really fond of that. But I do have one guy in mind I could. I'm doing breathing exercise. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Creating a coloring book in my free time. Oh, wow. I want a coloring book. That is so creative. I need some pointers to learn how to draw. If I showed you some of these pictures, like my mind is so creative, but I don't have the technique that I need all the way down pat. But I could get through to you what I'm trying to get out. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me. I'll be back in five. And I hope you all have a good day. And this is our Care Conversational Peace. We'll be back to talk about today's topic, which is neglect and toxic relationships.
Peace. See you, Ash. Be back in five. Hello, IG followers. It's your girl, Larkira, and you're on Larkira's Conversational Peace. Today, we're talking about neglect and toxic relationships. So I'm gonna share a little bit about my toxic toxic relationships as far as parents wise, sibling wise, partner wise. And then I'm gonna invite you guys to share a little bit as well. So um, some of you may have um, got a, the opportunity to read or have me have read a little bit of my book or heard my story so I'm dealing with a very very toxic uh, situation with my mother right now um, I don't want to go on a tantrum so I'm gonna start from the top and go work my way down so as far as the relationship with my mother and I it's very toxic right now um, I reach out and I reach out and I reach out and it becomes um, you know, behavior where your words are twisted or you say the wrong thing, you gotta walk on the eggshells and things of that nature. So it becomes draining. So to protect myself and my energy, I just choose how much of myself I give her and how much space I allow her to rent um, in my head. Because I am still human and I'm not saying I don't go through and it doesn't bother me, um, the rapport that we have, because it does. Um, very much but that's some things that I'm working on because in order for me um, to be a better version of myself that's a part of my past that I need to rectify you know um, so yeah yesterday on um, Mother's Day that was the first time that um, I got a text message from my mother in so long um, I do believe it might have been um, the fact that maybe she came to the realization you know um, that life is too short or maybe it could have been you know she doesn't want me to speak out um, but I don't know what it is but either way you know I was just happy um, that my mother did actually acknowledge you know that I said happy birth, um, Mother's Day and then um, the 11th which, and which was Monday was her birthday and I said happy birthday you know I wanted to bring her a gift and my mother told me um, the only thing that she wanted was to remove toxin, uh, toxic people out of her life, you know? And I just had to have a moment and laugh to myself because um, as far as I can remember, you know, being toxic started there with her. Um, and, you know, as I'm telling a little bit about my book, you know, I was punished as an adolescent for being an adult before it was my time. It was always stay in a child's place, but in the same breath, I'm doing a woman things. Forced to take care of myself. Taught how to sell from the local thriftway market, in which um, is in Northtown, and now called the Calb Market today. You know, so it's just a lot of things that um, I can relate to you guys with. I want you to know that you're not alone. And that I'm here today and I'm putting myself out there to let you know that you're not alone and that I stand with you. Um, and any questions or comments that you might have, and again, I um, ask and I challenge the professionals, whether you may be a CPS, that's a certified peer specialist, you may be a social worker, you may be a psychiatrist, you may be a psychologist, um, you may be a counselor, you might be a life coach, whatever your title is. I'm not really concerned with, but it is a great accomplishment. When I say that, I don't say that in a condescending way. I say that meaning that we're all survivors. Anyone who has survived something traumatic in their life or life altering or changing to them, you are a survivor. People ask me all the time, what is a survivor? A survivor is someone who survives. And if you have did any of those things and you feel like you can relate in any way, you know, it could be whether you had a breakdown, whether you were challenged with mental health, whether a family member, whether it was a law, uh, the loss of a loved one, 
whatever the situation is, I'm not putting a limit to that. What I'm saying is, a title does not um, matter. The only title that matters to me is that you're a survivor. So again, I challenge you to join me in my lives every day at 3 p.m. on um, conversations that, you know, people are afraid to have. People are afraid to have those uncomfortable conversations. People want to say, don't tell. Some people, um, when they have these conversations, they are not able to reach out for help. You know, and then when they do reach out for help, the people that they reach out for help don't believe them, you know? Or maybe when they reach out for help, the system fails them. You know, I have been in every situation and unfortunately, um, I stand before you today because I am here to break the generational curse. I do not want my children to have to endure any more pain, whether it be my personal children that I gave birth to, my godchildren, you know, my niece or my nephew or, you know, an adopted child, whether children, anyone that I come in contact with, I consider my baby because I have a love for children. That's who our care is. I'm a nurturing person. I'm a caring. I'm a giving person. Sometimes I give so much in the past that I forgot to give to me. But now I learned self-love. And that means give to you. That's not selfish. That's doing what you need to do. So I'm just sitting here cleaning my stove. Just doing some essential cleaning. Then I'll sanitize. Because we're all here stuck in this quarantine and this pandemic and I had to go out today um, for, you know, some things that were essential. So... I'm just trying to protect myself and those I love. And again, any questions, comments, or concerns, please comment below. You know, I'm in these groups I'm on Facebook. And it's this one group called um, Daughters of Toxic Mothers. I'm, I apologize. Daughters, daughter, um, Black Daughters of Toxic Mothers. And I just recently joined this group, maybe I want to say a week into it. And within this week, I have consumed so much, I don't want to say negative, but I want to say eye opening because I then knew that I stood so many in numbers to know that I wasn't alone, that people also went through this, you know. And this is one of my um things that I be concerned about so much because it's so unhealthy you know there's a such thing as healthy stress and there's a such thing as unhealthy stress and unhealthy stress is when you don't deal with underlying issues and one of those issues that I see in a group is just you know I feel like um as women we have that attachment to our mothers but we have to get strong enough that we know that we can love her and respect her but keep it at a distance until she's ready to deal with those underlying issues that obviously she shares um, with personal, personally within herself for you. So I say that to say that protect your energy because <laughs> energy is very powerful, you know? You, could, you know how you be around a person and they just give off this, their aura just gives off this negativity, this vibe, and you just feel so uneasy, you know, when you're around them. And that's what I say to my group members of toxic uh, mothers, uh, mothers, I'm sorry, daughters of toxic mothers. And um, I just say that to say, guys, protect your energy, you know? I'm not saying, you know, it doesn't hurt. I'm not saying that it's okay. But what I'm saying is, you matter. What I'm saying is, you are enough. What I'm saying is, have enough self-love, have enough self-respect, have enough resilience and empowerment for others as well first for yourself to just take a step back, you know? I had to learn the hard way and it's not always easy, you know, because we look to our mother for guidance, 
for support, for comfort. But I had to say to myself, you know, like here, your mother did what she could do and she put her best foot forth forward and that's all that matters you know when a person tries i can't be upset for that i can't be angry at that you know i have to let that go because it's unhealthy if i was to hold on to things like that so i challenge you all to let go of some of those things take baby steps find people that you can relate to that share the same life experiences as you do so you can start healing because all my life, from the time I can remember, I have been in front of psychotherapists, psychiatrists, and all kind of things because of the traumatic experiences that I had in my life. And they couldn't seem to figure out for the life of them, how is she still standing? Why didn't she fall yet? I'm not saying Larkira didn't have some times where um, I had some moments where I had weakness, where I was just emotional because of all the things that was going on in me. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I fought my way out of it through things like music, through my writing, through just my talks to my grandmother. You know, some might not believe in it, but I believe in the unnatural. And I believe that my grandmother, you know, her spirit is still here, even though her body isn't. You know, so she gets me through a lot of my days as well as my late Aunt Denise that these two women I talk about and they're phenomenal to me in my life. They mean so much um, because they taught me to be the woman that I am today. They gave me that structure and that guidance that I needed. And if they were still here today, wow, I don't even know. Because I can't say because they're not. So again, I can relate because I share grief with someone that I consider my mother. It wasn't my biological. Neither one of them, my aunt nor my grandmother was, but they raised me. They had a big part in my upbringing. So if you want to talk about grief, you want to talk about homelessness, you want to talk about incest, you want to talk about rape, you want to talk about first marriages, you want to talk about same-sex couples, you want to talk about doing jail time, you want to talk about anything, nine times out of ten, I can relate. So I challenge you to please join my live at 3 p.m. Join in this conversational piece, the uncomfortable things that people are afraid to talk about or just don't talk about. Until then, 